Morning, Bandy. Good morning, this is Tam Wendell with Bushcraft on Fire. And today I was going to show you all how we make some cheese. Our cow recently had a calf, that was the calf you saw in the picture. And so we milk her out twice a day. So what we're gonna do today is show you on milking the cow and making some different cheese. So we'll be back with you in a minute while we start milking. The first thing we do is we give her udder a real good wash and then dry it. And after we dry it, we'll just get a couple squirts out of each teat to make sure everything's good and clean. Well, it's looking all good and clean, so time to get milking. As you can see, she's good and full of milk. I'll turn the bucket here. And we get anywhere from one and a half to three gallons per milking, depending on how much the calf took out of her. We only milk her out twice a day and the calf gets the rest of her. So we'll show you how we go from this fresh milk into some cheese. So we'll see you in the kitchen in a bit. When we take the milk in, what we do is strain it through a cloth just in case a hair or something might have got into the milk. So we strain all the milk and then it immediately gets chilled in the refrigerator. Well, here we are back in the kitchen and I've got a pot with two gallons of milk on the stove. I just have it on low temperature. I'm getting the milk to, it was in the refrigerator, so I'm getting the milk to 55 degrees, which is really cool. I didn't want it too cold, but you don't want it above 55. And the recipe I'm following came from someone online called Ricky Carroll and I took the instructions somebody shared were hers and just do it the way I'm most comfortable with it. So here's the milk and I'm going to need to add some ingredients to this. The first ingredient we're going to be adding is citric acid. Now to two gallons of milk you add two and a half level teaspoons of citric acid mixed in cool water and I'm mixing it in I already made it, so it's mixed, pre-mixed here in a half a cup of cool water. And the next ingredient I'll be adding is rennet. This is a, see here, liquid vegetable rennet. I ordered it online from a place called Leaners. And this I do a half a teaspoon in a quarter cup of cool water, and you can see that sitting over here. So the first step now is to mix my citric acid into the milk. Okay, you pour the citric acid just in a thin stream. Kind of move it around the pot while you're doing it. And sort of turn the milk up like this. Kind of in an upward motion. Just make sure it's in there real good. Stir it for a few seconds. Make sure it's distributed over through all the milk here. Now the next step is pretty much a waiting game. I never do my milk at fast temperatures. It's really easy to get your milk too hot. And so I still have it on low. I'm going to move it up to about four on the dial until it reaches 88 degrees. And then I will add my rennet. So as soon as it's at 88, we'll show you the next step. We are at 88 degrees, so now in goes the rennet. I'm just sort of doing it in a roundabout motion, moving the rennet through. And here's where we're just going to stir until we see that beautiful mir miracle of mozzarella begin to take place in the pot. I'm going to continue heating it up until no higher than 105. And again, this isn't something you do in a rush. You just slowly bring your temperature up. See little humps beginning to form. try to stay on camera to 
show you this as it takes place. I don't know if you have the cameras picking it up, but you can see it all beginning to form clots. It's beginning to hold together. It's getting thicker and thicker as I stir. bottom a good stir so nothing sticks. You should be able to see the water, it's not water, the curds separating from the whey. It's beginning to cling together in one big ball now. Just keep stirring until it's all gobbed together in one big ball. I want to get all those delicious bits of mozzarella to stick together. So that's what we're going to be working with to make our mozzarella. At this stage it's still just gooey cheese. Okay, I think now that I've got most of it all hanging on this spoon, so I'm going to remove it from the heat and pour it through a colander so I can begin working the cheese. First thing I'm going to do is try to get as much of this cheese on my spoon. It's always a challenge. And I'll get that into my cloth here in the colander. There we go. It's all coming out. That's what we want it to do. Then I'll just stir up the bottom of the pan. Make sure if there's anything in there it loosens up. And I will pour over. So just gently pour the whey in here. You can see a bit of mozzarella still in the bottom of the pan here as I pour. And like I said, you want to get all of the cheese you're working hard to make. Alright, I'm going to let that drain. I'll show you the next step. You can see most of the whey has drained off of it, off of the cheese. And here we have our lump of cottage cheese in its early stages. Now we need to get all the way out and that's where the next step begins. So I'll take a piece of the cheese, I'll try to squeeze whatever way I can out of it, and I'm going to put it on a plate and we're going to put this into the microwave for 30 seconds. you can see it through the microwave window, it's going to slowly melt and stretch across the plate. It's going to be very hot. This part is a bit messy and hot on the fingers. You might want to use rubber gloves. See, it sort of looks like a gooey mess. We're just starting here. What I like to do is to take a fork or a spoon, it's very hot, and begin to just let it stretch out. Extremely hot, so it's one of these ooh ooh ah things. But at the same time, as it cools, you're continuing to squeeze it. You can see it looks a lot smoother 
and I'm squeezing this way out. I'm trying to get all the moisture out at this stage. And then I'll pop it back into the microwave again for 30 seconds and show you again.